In this video, we're going to continue on from the previous video. In the previous video, we set up an ESP32 as a web server from which you could switch on and off some DIO. In this video, we're going to add some authentication to that device so that when you access it from a web browser, you'll have to insert a username and a password. If you haven't seen the previous video, the link is in the description below, along with the files that I used. So this is a modification to the existing script from the previous video, which was called ESP32 Web Server DIO. So we'll use this script and save it as ESP32 Web Server DIO with authentication. Very simple modifications now. So first I'm going to define my authentication key, which is my user and password, which is user colon pass put through a base64 encoder and I'll talk through that later on uh, in the video when we go to change the password. So first I'm just going to define the constant character pointer as base64 encoding um, and this is the hash that is output from user colon pass but again I'll go through that again in a few minutes. So first I'm just going to show you how to define it and query it. So the string dxnlcjpwyxnz is the base64 encoded hash output of user pass as well just it's the base64 so now you can move down in the sketch and you want to go down to the point where the HTTP request uh, is empty and has finished so that's the line if current line length equals equals zero and just go down underneath that and we're going to find the right credentials within the header and you can do this with a simple if statement and that's if the he index of the header is correct we will load the web page to the browser okay so the if statement is if header dot index of and then you can go bracket and I'm going to use my bait 64 encoding, which is the uh, constant char pointer that I defined earlier. Um, and what you do is if the index of this is greater than or equal to zero, then you can load the web page. Okay, so I'm just going to move uh, all this code that is um, that let, that loads the web page. I'm going to move that just tab it in a bit to make it look a bit neater and just add some comments okay so I'm just going to highlight all the code that loads the page and that's all of that down to the break it's a little bit further down there's the break there so I'm just going to tab that in and create a, an else statement so that if the base64 encoding key is incorrect um, then it will send back uh, some notifications some feedback to the user uh, so i'm just going to start with uh, http 1.1401 unauthorized um, and then client print line i'll just copy and paste just for convenience So client print line www dash authenticate basic realm equals slash secure. And what this does is it tells the client which uh, encoding scheme the server prefers. Okay, so after that's done, I'll add another line. And on this line, we're going to say content type uh, colon text slash HTML. And what this does, it uh, lets the client know what type of media, in this case, text slash HTML, um, that it's expected. So now I'm just going to put in an empty print line. And finally, one last one, which is some HTML uh, saying, uh, authentication 
failed. And close the HTML brackets. And that's it. So we've added authentication. I'm going to test it out now. Um, so just going to compile and upload the code to the ESP32. I'll just compile it first to make sure there's no errors. That's fine now. So I'm going to upload it, which compiles it again, but I'll upload it to the ESP32. And it's uploading, you can see on the bottom of the screen. Okay, so once that's complete, you can open up the serial monitor and you can see that the device has connected, in this case to my Mishmash Labs network. And here's the IP address, so I'm gonna copy that and open up a browser. So straight away it asks for the authentication, user and password. So as I explained earlier, the hash, the base64 encoded hash, uh, is the equivalent of user and pass. So that's P-A-S-S -S as a password. I'll explain again in, in a few minutes how to change that now. So once I press sign in, um, it should straight away, we're into the web server, we have authenticated, and you can go on to control your DIO remotely. Okay, so now, as I mentioned earlier, changing the base64 encoded hash to, to whatever you want. So go to this site called base64encode.org. There's the URL, it's in the description as well. Okay, so here we're going to enter the username separated with a colon and then the password. So I'm going to go with Mishmash Labs as my username and lowercase Mishmash as my password. So once you've entered your username and password separated by a colon, you can go down to the bottom of the page and click in code and the hash output will be in the table below. So I take that hash and I'm going to copy it back into the script. I'm just going to comment out the previous one so I have it for later. Okay, so there's my new hash, which is the equivalent of Mishmash Labs as the username and Mishmash as a password. So I'll just comment this so I remember for future reference. It's also going to be in the code, which is attached in the description below. Just copy that in there for the comments in case I change it again later. So Mishmash Labs, colon, the password, which is Mishmash. And that's the hash. Okay, so I'm going to upload that back into the board. It's compiling there now. And once it's compiled, it'll start to upload. So it's connecting and it's uploading there. Okay, it's just opened the serial monitor again to confirm the IP hasn't changed. So it's the same again, but I'll just copy and paste it in again to refresh it. So open the IP again in the browser and enter the new password, which is Mishmash Labs and Mishmash lowercase and straight back into the web server and I'm able to control my DIO. So here I'm controlling some LEDs red and green. You can see a link to the previous video at the start of this video or in the description below if you'd like to see how that's controlled and how that web server is set up initially. You can just control on and off. Okay, so thanks again for watching our tutorials. It's been brought to you by Mishmash Labs. If you've liked this video, Please press like, subscribe and turn on the notifications below. Thanks for watching.